welcome back to the Wispian. This year has been unlike any other to say the least. It felt really slow, but it also went by really fast. It felt really uncertain, but also very transformative. And I think we can all agree that it wasn't anything like what we expected it would be. But now that we are halfway through this year that we will one day be reading about in the history books, I wanted to take some time to sit down and review how the year has gone for me, kind of take an inventory of where I'm at and decide where I want to go for the rest of the year. I was very inspired to do this by Michelle B. She has some videos on her channel about how she does mid-year and end-of-year life audits, so I loosely followed her outline for this process. If you want to check out exactly how she does that and her worksheet for this process, I put the link in the description, but otherwise I'm just going to be taking you through what I gained from this review process. So these are my nine pages that I typed up and printed out. I already started putting some of these on my wall, so that's why they have washi tape on them. This process took me about two and a half hours to complete, so it's really manageable. You don't have to like plan out every single week for the rest of the year, every single day. It's just a nice opportunity to do a little check-in, pat yourself on the back, and get yourself back on track if you need to. So the very first thing that I did was I listed out all of my wins from the first half of 2020 that I could remember. It's surprising how easy it is to forget about your accomplishments, so write down everything no matter how big or small it is. For example, just a couple of weeks ago, I hit 10,000 followers on Instagram and honestly, just a while back, I didn't think that would ever be possible for me. And so even though that was a big accomplishment, somehow it just completely faded out of my memory and I didn't even remember that accomplishment until I was halfway through my list. So my accomplishments from 2020 are the ones that I feel comfortable sharing on here. I completed my first solo trip, I redesigned my blog website, I created and launched my first serious digital product, I made an email video course with a workbook and that's called 21 Days to Productive Flow if you're interested. I made a lot of progress in learning Korean and studied consistently for two hours every day. I've grown my YouTube channel from less than 20,000 subscribers to more than 80,000 so thank you so much for that. My email list has gone from from a thousand people to more than eight thousand people. I've done my very first sponsored videos. I completed the whole 30, which is 30 days of not eating sugar, dairy, grains, beans, or soy products. Yeah, it was a lot. I've read 13 books so far this year, which is way ahead of the goal that I set for myself. I've been drinking a lot of water. No accomplishment is too small to put on your list. I donated blood twice, which is a very big deal for someone who used to be very afraid of needles. I did my first YouTube collaboration. I finally reached 10 k on instagram i finally found kind of like a flow with posting on instagram where i never really feel like i'm running out of photos to post i don't feel the pressure to post every day and i also just don't fall into that trap of like instagram comparisonitis nearly as much so that's good i got into ie university and got a scholarship i decluttered my closet spent a lot of time with my family i created a lot of videos that i'm really proud of i did the chloe ting two week shred so as you can see these are all very very different they span all areas of life so for this next part I wanted to check in and see how I was doing in different areas of life so for this I used some of the categories that I had on my 2020 intentions list some of the categories that I have on my aspects of life note card that I use for brain dumping to do's at the start of the week and just some other categories that I came up with in terms of mental health I've been doing pretty well like quarantine has definitely been a challenge and I do think I've been having a couple more sad days than usual and getting into more ruts and that's just because I'm always staying at home but all things considered I've been creating structure for myself meditating choosing positive thoughts surrounding myself with positive messages so I think for the circumstances I've been doing a good job so that's the review and then looking ahead to the next six months I wrote down a few things that I could try doing and I highlighted those because those are like the action steps so when I look back on this as I will be doing regularly I don't want to read this in entire long ass nine page document I want my eye to be drawn to the things that I can do on a daily basis the actions that I can take so for my mental health something that I've tried and I want to do on a more regular basis is taking any negative thoughts that I have and rewording them in my journal so that I can create a more positive perspective for myself and then now that some places are opening up I would like to have more coffee dates with friends safely 
and more classes at the gym safely. In February, I did the Whole30, which completely changed my eating habits, so I was very proud of that and very grateful that I did that. A few weeks ago, I did the Chloe Ting two-week shred. Yes, I hopped on the bandwagon. That was really rewarding to finish, and my core definitely feels stronger now. And for a couple of months now, I've been very slowly and healthily losing some weight because in Europe, I was thoroughly enjoying lots of delicious foods. I mean, no regrets. It was amazing. But since I got home, I've just been focusing more on my health and getting back into more of a routine. So overall for the future, I just said keep doing what I'm doing basically. I feel like my exercise these days is very go with the flow. Like I don't plan it out for the week. I just do whatever I'm feeling like doing that day. And I really like it that way because I don't want exercise to become a big central aspect of my life. For me, it's just a tool to help me feel good and stay healthy. Okay, the next category is photography. So here's the thing about photography. Since my how I started a photography business as a teen video did quite well, I feel like people have come to overestimate how much of a role photography actually plays in my life. So like in my Q&As, I'll get tons of questions about photography. People will ask me if I want to be a professional photographer as my future career. And it felt really weird to me. It was like this variation of imposter syndrome where I didn't necessarily feel like I wasn't as knowledgeable as people thought I was. But much more than that, I felt like people thought I was way more interested in photography than I actually was. So as of now, I'm really not focusing on photography. I will be doing some senior portrait shoots this summer because some people reached out to me. I didn't really even advertise. But after that, after July, I just don't really see myself doing photography in the future and that's okay. It was an amazing part-time job. I love doing it. I learned a lot about freelancing and running a business, but now I have other things that I'm more interested in that I want to focus on. The next category is blog slash YouTube. This is the big one. So as I said, 2020 didn't go how I thought it would, but as a result of spending so much time at home, my blog really took center stage in my life and honestly, I'm really happy with how things worked out. If you took me back to just December of last year, I don't think I could have imagined that I'd be on track to be reaching 100,000 subscribers by the end of July. I've seen so much growth this year. I've started doing sponsored videos. I'm really starting to view it as a business and not just as something that could maybe one day be a business, but not today because no one's really watching my videos or reading what I write. I was going through all of my old blog posts recently and I had completely forgotten how much I had improved in all of my blogging skills and also how much more focused I've become in my niche because those old blog posts, like they were just all over the place. I used to blog about whatever interested me. And so I think one of my accomplishments this year is just getting really clear on the fact that I want this to be a productivity self-improvement channel. So yeah, I've been spending a lot of time on YouTube and honestly, I love it so much. Like I have all these cheesy moments where I'm like planning out a video or uploading a video and I'm just like, I love doing this so much, like I'm so lucky that I get to do this. So yeah, for the next six months, one of my goals is to find a business coach because previously I didn't really have much of an audience and I was just trying to find people to read my blog posts and watch my videos. But now that I do have an audience, I'm trying to figure out how to leverage that audience. And I think getting advice from someone who has done that, who is farther along than I am, would really speed up the process. Another goal I have is I want to incorporate some other project, some other facet into the Bliss Bean. I've left this kind of open because I want to give myself room to explore different options but yeah keep your eyes open for something exciting coming that I also do not know yet what it will be and then I said I want to work on streamlining my blogging processes I want to get more efficient and start repurposing some of my old content from back when there were like four people reading the bliss fiend and just get that in front of a new audience for this category I also took some time to think way into the future way beyond 2020 I just finished you are a badass at making money so I included one of the exercises from that which was to look five years into the future imagine where you would like to see yourself financially and just like where your business is at and then work your way back to the present moment and try to kind of set checkpoints for that language learning so last year i felt kind of stuck with language learning but this year i feel like i'm making so much progress with korean probably partly because i'm just spending a lot more time on it like 12 hours a week but also because i've been doing lessons with a tutor which really pushed me out of my comfort zone and that's where you grow for long time Time I've had my phone in Spanish to help me practice so I'm thinking maybe by the end of this year I could switch it to Korean without losing all of the functionality of my phone and then I actually even said that I might want to reduce the amount of time that I spend studying languages because language learning is important to me but it's not the only thing that's important to me and I've been dedicating a lot of my really productive focused hours to that so it might just be time to adjust a little bit 
The next category, so on my 2020 intentions list, the very last category was called challenging myself. So consistently doing things that push me out of my comfort zone. And so in 2020, I think I've been a little too safe. And part of that is definitely just the fact that I'm always staying at home. So like, it's harder to challenge yourself. I did challenge myself by putting together my productivity course that was very new to me and I learned a lot. I did some health challenges that I'm proud of completing. For the next six months, I just said that I want to be more energetic and passionate about life and I know that's not like a smart goal, but it's just something that I want to look at and be reminded of. One specific thing that I did list though was that I wanna get a perm. I've been thinking about doing that for a really long time and so maybe soon, but I don't know if the hair salons are actually open yet, so maybe not soon. I had a category for friends and I just wrote that in the past six months and since graduating high school, who I talk to the most has definitely been shifting a lot as is to be expected after high school. And for the next six months, I'm sure it will continue to shift a lot as I meet new people in college if I go to college and I just need to allow that to happen and make sure that I'm surrounding myself with people who inspire me and support me. Reading. I'm gonna toot my own horn here. I've been doing very good at that. I recently did a book recommendations video if you wanna check that out. My Goodreads goal for the year was 15 books and I've read 13 so far, so I have six months to read two books now. I did write down that I want to start buying some books because normally I just get books from the library, which is fine if I want to read it once. But since I like reading books in the self-help and personal development genres, a lot of these are so packed with information that it would be really nice to have a copy of my own to just take notes in and highlight and write inside. And finally, the category of space. So my environment is very important to me. So that's why I'm very particular about how I decorate my room, keeping my room tidy. And I like how it looks now. It's just been this way for quite a while. And if I'm going to college, that doesn't really matter. But if I were to stay at home, then I definitely want to do some kind of a big room makeover. So yeah, the college question. Since I was already doing a lot of life thinking, I thought I would just take some time to write out the pros and cons of what I currently see to be my options regarding the college situation. So here's the dealio. If you're new to my channel or just don't know, I'm currently on a gap year and the plan was to go to Spain to IE University next year to study communications and digital media. It's pretty funny how naive I was at the start of this year thinking, oh, I picked the perfect year to take a gap year. I get to avoid all of this trouble and clearly the trouble is very much not over. Obviously things are still uncertain and no one can predict what the school year will be like, but the way I see it, I have three options. I can plan on going to Spain, I can stay home and try to do online classes, or I can just stay home and take another gap year. So I've really started doubting what I would do when my family's plane tickets to Spain got canceled and we have not yet gotten new ones, but I took the opportunity to write out a list of pros and cons for each of my options. But basically the gist of it is that going to Spain no longer seems very appealing because no matter how things turn out, it's just not gonna be a regular school year and that's, I don't know, it's kind of a bummer. And since I've already taken one gap year and I think it went quite well, honestly would not mind taking another one. So maybe by the time this video is uploaded, I will have made a decision or things will be clearer. But for the moment, I'm very confused. Okay, finally, the last step of this little mid-year exercise was to write out a list of things to do or targets to reach by the end of this year. Again, I didn't take great care to make all of these specific time measured whatever smart goals. I actually want to have room for flexibility. I think this entire year has been a testament to the fact that even if things don't go entirely to plan, they can still go very well. So this is what I wrote down. By the end of 2020, I want to reach 175,000 subscribers. I'm pretty sure that's mathematically realistic. I want to get more efficient with my blogging, so I already talked about that. I want to look into like books and articles that teach you how to blog better. I want to find a business coach to work with. I set myself a goal for how much I want to be making per month from my blog and I just feel like it's kind of awkward to talk about money so I'm not going to give you the exact number but I thought it would be good to set a target for myself so that I'm constantly looking for ways not just to keep putting out weekly videos but to actually be consistently growing the bliss bean. I want to do something fun with my hair. I want to create some other facet of the bliss bean so whether that is a product launch or a podcast, I don't know yet. And finally, I would love to go on a trip with friends because I miss my friends, I miss traveling, and 
hopefully by the end of 2020 this will be a possibility so that's it that was a gosh darn long video to record and i hope you're not sick of me talking going through this process definitely re-energized me it made me inspired and excited for the rest of this year so i definitely encourage you to try this out as well let's also motivate each other in the comments so write down three of your wins from this year so far remember it doesn't have to be big it can be really small like i was proud of myself for drinking a lot of water this year if you enjoyed this video please give it a like and subscribe to my channel turn on notifications and i will see you next week bye